possible is actually, truthfully, good news without a but. <laughs> so, so that's what we're learning. And that is, you know, going from, now, we have principles, of course, but principles are what? Principles are just things that we do because we enjoy them. But the gospel is what you've been brought into. So we're not bringing people into something that they have to be brought into again by their own works. They're already are all the way in. Okay, they're all the way in and experiencing the fullness of what you've been brought into is a, um, I like to say is an art project. Okay, it's an art project. It is how do you want to paint your picture? Because it's an art project more than it is a rule. It's more like how do you want to paint this beautiful, on this beautiful canvas that is your life, the beauty of the splendor of, of the glory of God. And that is what the Spirit of the Lord helps us with. So anytime you say, well, I made a mistake and I did this and I did that. Well, you know, it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from those inconsistencies. Because those inconsistencies were not our true nature. They were a false nature. It was a false self. It, it, like I said, you're powerful. You could be a false self. And if you didn't know any better, you would, act, you know, think about how children act, you know, when they're a little baby from when they get older, you know. They can't change their own diapers. I mean, they can't even use the bathroom. I mean, we have different levels, and, and we don't get angry with them. Right. We just realize, oh, they're growing. Mm -hmm. They're learning, you know? But see, what happens is, is, is religious teaching keeps people in an infant state. Mm -hmm. Like, not, a, not even a toddler state. It keeps it in an infant state, like a little baby state. And many have decided that this is the way. <laughs> Be in an infant state. But the Spirit of the Lord is working on people at the same time, and they're like, but wait, should I still be in an infant state? And they're like, I don't think I should. I wonder, so I'm going to take some classes. People are doing things because they know that they want more, but they don't exactly know how to get more, so they go and they do classes. Now, again, if you hear the Word of God, that's always a plus, okay? But what you're hopefully hearing at some point is the fact that you don't have to do anything to get closer to God but it has more to do with experiencing him. What is experience? Experiencing Experience means practicing. It means doing it over and over again. Doing it over and over again. When you do it over and over again, you become practiced at it. You get, it becomes easier for you to do naturally. Naturally. Have you ever, when you first heard about healing, you just thought that when you're sick, you just stay sick until you get better. But then you're like, well, wait a minute. I have this healing thing. And so you start to practice healing. You start to practice engaging the health that is yours over time. And you're like, oh, I'm going to get healed. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask God and I'm going to be healed. And so over time, you practiced and practiced. Did God give you more healing? No, you always had it. You just began to practice it. So is all the things of the Spirit. Everything is like that. People are like, well, I would like to have visions and dreams. I'd like to have more of these kind of experiences. Well, practice. Yeah, but that's going to be, I'm going to be flaky then, Jamin. Don't practice like that. Don't practice like I've got to make something. Because again, if you do like I've got to make something, you don't believe because you're trying to make something. Does that make sense? But if you know that God's already brought you in and it is his good pleasure to show you the kingdom, you're going to start having visions and dreams. But honor them when they come and let them come in steps, phases, growth, development. You're going to see people like Brother Hagen. You see other people. They're going to tell you all these visions and dreams. Like Brother Hagen would get visions all the time. Like continually, like he'd just be sitting here and he, and sometimes I've had that happen where you're seeing, you're actually like seeing two different stories <laughs> all the time. It's like, here's this story where we're here. And then there's another story happening at the exact same time. And it's crazy over time, but you can learn to develop and to grow in the things of the spirit. So is it your effort that gets you there? No, it's the spirit of the Lord. Usually it's these facets to start with from what I've learned through experience is the spirit of wisdom. First of all. Spirit of wisdom is awesome, okay? Then you have the spirit of understanding, okay? So th this is the spirit, it's the seven spirits that are before the throne of God that have been brought to teach us the ways of the kingdom of heaven. This is for sure how it works, okay? So you're trained and you're taught and you're brought up into a place of maturity through the spirit of, of the Lord. God's not giving you something new. You've been already brought in. Christ did everything for you. But now what's happening is, is we are starting to change our understanding of who we are. Who are we? Who are we really? How powerful are you? Well, I will tell you, it's going to take eternity to see how powerful you are. 
because the amount of power that's within you, I mean, there are people, okay, that we know through scripture and people in modern days that have been translocated. They, their physical body has gone from one place in the world to another place in the world, then back again. What kind of physics is involved in that type of activity? I mean, we're saying, you, you know, you see Star Trek and it's like, beam me up, right? And boo, and they turn it and then come back and they're like, you know, it took us a while to get that figured out. We had a big mess for a long time, you know, but now we also found out that you already have that technology. You've already had it. But, but the problem is, is that a, a human spirit is fully realized in God, not apart from him. In other words, in our mind. See, we were not enemies with God in our flesh. We were enemies with God in our mind. In other words, the way our mind was working was in opposition to our true nature, which is found in God. But once that changes and we have metanoia, which is to change one's mind, and we stop seeing Christ as merely a man, but begin to see him as the son of God, as God incarnate, God in the flesh, that, that thought is the single most powerful thought to acknowledge. Because when you acknowledge that, what you're actually acknowledging is your true self. And when you acknowledge your true self, it changes the way you interact in your life with not just God, but with everything. Okay? So that's where translocation can happen, or trans, however you want to call it. But, you know, the, the uh, Apostle Philip, you know, um, or the Evangelist Philip. And then we also have Peter. We have Paul, who actually went to heaven. He said possibly in his body. He doesn't know, because some of these experiences are really, like, really beyond our understanding, but something happened where he could have been in his body or out of his body. He wasn't sure. I'm not sure. It doesn't know. I don't care. God knows. It's up to God. God you can ask God about it. But something's happening here where Paul realizes that my body is so powerful that I can go to heaven and come back without dying. That's a revelation. How much power have we been brought into? But see, the power isn't seen until it's realized. Because you're not going to go take a step in that direction if you don't think anything's there. But, but the Spirit of the Lord who works with us and shows us what we've been brought into starts to open up these areas. Now, for many years, we've been taught the gifts. And the gifts are wonderful. And the gifts are very real. The gifts of the Spirit I'm talking about. You know, prophecy, laying on of hands, you know, or well, not laying on of hands, but gifts of healing, um, you know, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, all these different kind of gifts. And those are good introductions. But what we're being brought into now is what we call sonship. Now in sonship, we're fully realized. So instead of a word of knowledge, we have what's called unlimited knowledge. And unlimited knowledge is things such as metanoia, where, or not metanoia, but in uh, cardionosis, where you can actually hold a person in your heart and it gives you heart knowledge. And so you can have heart knowledge of a nation, you can start to see an entire nation. You can start to see that the personality, the angel that, that, that governs that nation, the angel that, that guards it. You can begin to interact with that in a national level. This is all real. It's, there is people that say they have this and they don't, but it actually is real. There really are angels over nations. You could actually interact with that angel. You can speak to that angel. If that's something that you're holding in your heart, if there's a nation you're holding in your heart, I'm guessing that missionaries who go to other countries, they hold these like China. China has, is getting beat up again. As a nation, it shouldn't be getting beat up. God doesn't want China beat up. Beat up with communists, now beat up with viruses, beat up with all this kind of stuff. But as a nation, you can hold China in your heart. And when you do, it gives you heart knowledge about what's going to happen in that nation and begin to speak life and to the people that those diseases and those wicked things, and now you have the World Health Organization, which is a globalist group, now trying to capitalize on this to begin to sell more products to people and get people into fear and the media and all this, they call it a Leviathan spirit, twisting it all around. All of that to torture the nations. And so God's heart is that this become laid bare and that it become clear and that the lies and all the junk that's going on is, is exposed, right? But see, that's the heart of God. He doesn't want this gray area where people are playing games and making money politically and all this kind of stuff. He's going black, white. Yeah. You choose your, you choose which side. You're either going to be in, in with, with sin or you're going to be in with the sons. But, you, but there's no this. This doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And so the Spirit of the Lord is separating. Yeah. And the angels are a part of that, right? Because we know that angels are a part of, of separation. So they come and they do their job. But we can't, so God's going to do this stuff, right? 
So as sons, we get to participate in the fun stuff in the spirit. But you don't get to participate if you don't want to participate because it's not, it's not a big deal. It's like, look, if you don't want to participate, it's fine. I mean, you can just do your thing and just, you know, get entertained and be done. That's fine. God's good with that too. But, but there's something that stirs in the heart of, of human beings or spirit beings that says that there's more. And there is more. And the Spirit of the Lord is like, you're right, there is more. Let me show you something. And you're like, whoa. And then you're like, that was weird. And then you tell someone, they're like, that's weird, man. And you're like, what do you think? Bad pizza. All right, forget it. But you're still there thinking. You're like, man, there's something else there. There's something else going on. Because have you ever read Revelation? (laughs) Have you ever read Daniel? Have you ever read what visions look like? They're wild. You'd be like, Daniel, you're, you're weird, man. Daniel prophesied all of the history of mankind. She saw Jesus coming. I mean, it's all there. It's the spirit of the Lord. So because we're familiar with him, and the more familiar we become with him, the more we're able to easily distinguish between what is true and what is not true. But, but don't be afraid of not knowing what is true and what is not true because you do have the spirit of truth within you. And, he's a, and the spirit of truth doesn't say it's supernatural, it's not true. That's not what the spirit of truth says because some things are true and some things are not. And some things you need discernment in. Some things you need the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding. So let the Lord work with you on this. Don't be afraid of dipping your toe into the river because you, you're going to like it, okay? It isn't something you control. You can't control him. And um, I don't know if you saw some of those songs we had up there, but one of the songs that God Roberto sings is called Wild Goose, okay? And that song is about the Holy Spirit. Because I guess it's the, the Celtic saints, the Celtic, I don't know how you say it, but anyway, the Irish Celtic guys, okay? Those saints, when the spirit would start to move, he, he's so uncontrollable that the only thing that they could describe it is like a wild goose. So he's like a wild goose. So, so if we're trying to get control over, over him, you're not going to do anything. You need to be under the influence, <laughs> right? You need to be under the influence of the Spirit. Once we're under the influence of the Spirit, then, so there's, so don't worry about being in control, okay? And don't worry about, um, I know it's like, well, that's easier said, right? But, but really let the Lord lead you th- by love, okay? If you're, if you're like, okay, I don't know how far I want to go, Jamin, you're telling me I can meditate on God, I can see visions, I can do this. Is that something I can, I want? Can I want that? Can you be like, but I'd like to see angels. Oh, you can't want to see angels. Someone will tell you. But I want to see an angel. I want to see my angel. But you can't want to see an angel, Jamie, because if you do that, then it's going to be the devil. Where does it say that in the Bible? Where do you think you got the desire to see an angel? (laughs) Probably because your angel would like to know you better. Our angels are assigned to us for a time, and they love us a lot. I mean, you know, as much love as you see when you see Jesus, that same love comes from your angels. You see, and they love you very much, and they've been with you your whole life, even from when you were little. They remember everything about your about you growing up. They, you could, I've reminisced with my angel before. He's he. I had my angel tell me one time. Oh, I remember that. I remember this. You know. Now I haven't I haven't seen him in a physical form, but I saw him as a glowing light. Because the Lord told me, He's like, I'm going to show you my angel. I'm going to show you your angel. He said. I was like, Oh, you are. He's like, I'm going to show you tonight. I was like, Oh, that's awesome. So um, so I had an experience in the spirit. I think that was the one where I went up over my bed and I was twirling around in the spirit uh, like really, really fast. And while it was happening, um, I was getting all sorts of revelation from, from God, like just one after those, like, like all sorts of things were happening. And then all of a sudden I stopped and I fell down into my body and I was upside down. My head was in my feet and my, my feet were in my head and it freaked me out. And I was like, ah, and I went, and I went back into my head like that. I was like, oh my goodness, what just happened? And then I heard the Lord said, and, and then I turned over and I looked at, over at my side of my bed, and there was this big glowing, um, brown glowing thing. And the Lord, I heard the Lord as clear as that. He goes, and there's your angel. And I was like, holy cow, what in the world was that? Okay, so that is what happened to me, because it's okay to see an angel. And it's okay to want to see an angel. <laughs> You're going to get flaky if you want to be spiritual. That is not true. It does not say that in the Bible. You need to be in the here and now, Jamin, not up in the sky. You're already up in the sky. The problems that you're having is because you're not recognizing where you are. You're only dealing with a lower realm when you're actually multidimensional, and you need to begin to allow the Lord to speak to you. 
I can tell you right now, this kind of teaching, if other pastors here, you're teaching that, your church is going to be flaked out. I will tell you right now, I do not believe that. And I'll tell you why. Because we have a good guide. The Spirit of the Lord is a good guide. If you feel like you need to be super spiritual so you can have some level of success as a Christian, you're going to get let off. You're going to be off. But true sonship comes from an understanding of the fact that you are already loved, you are already accepted, you are already in God, and now out of that love, out of that acceptance, out of the fact that Jesus has by grace completely brought you in, now from that place, ask the Spirit of the Lord to begin to show you the realms of the kingdom of heaven, and he will do it. But there are people that run around and they want to be a prophet and they want to be this and they want to be that because they want to bring people to themselves. They want some type of recognition. But this is where you go low, 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 low. And when you're really low, and the Lord's like, it's, it's still lower than that. And you're like, it's lower than that? And he's like, yeah, it's really low. <laughs> and you're like, you mean nobody will know? No one will know. It's like, but who does know? He does. And what he's doing in us and through us is more valuable than the yeast of the Pharisees. Because the yeast of the Pharisees, this is a religious thing, they cared about what people thought about them. That was their main thing. That was their reward. And Jesus is like, you got your reward. So move on. No more rewards for you, right? And then you have the yeast of Herod, right? Where they're trying to get all political with everything. Well, you got political, good job. You know. But now you have like the kingdom of heaven, which is like, you know, there's beasts by the throne with eyes all over them, and you've got the seven candlesticks, you know, the Spirit of the Lord, and you have holy, 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 and then you have, uh, you know, the four faces of Yahweh, you know, with the, the ox and the eagle and the man. You have all this going on in heaven, right? What, what is that? What is all of this stuff? This is a different, this is different. <laughs> so how do you get knowledge on that? Well, you're going to have to go there. You're going to have to go. And so that's what the Lord's saying. Just go. <laughs> it's okay. Go into heaven. See Jesus. Let him lead you. Okay? Don't feel like you need a whole bunch of stuff. Be like, what? Well, you people are going to go crazy. People are already crazy. The reason that they're crazy is because they haven't seen Jesus. They're acting crazy as they can be. People need to get back into the word of God, which who is Christ, by the way, not religious. Anybody can be religious and stuffy. Okay, that's not getting back to the word. Being stuffy and religious is not getting, that's being stuffy and religious. And being stuffy and religious doesn't help anybody. Most people just get really upset with God and upset with you because you're being mean and you're not operating in the gospel anymore. You're operating in a fake gospel, a false gospel. And the false gospel is God loves you, but <laughs> anything after that is now you've entered into non-gospel. That's what it says in Galatians. So we have a Galatians church, right, pretty much, and we're moving out of that. Mm -hmm. We're moving into, woo, fun church. <laughs> so I have a message that's up there, but I keep talking, so I haven't got to it. Since it's 1156, I'm going to stop because this isn't working. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll do this message next week, hopefully. So I'll close in prayer because it's 1156. So I've, I think we're done. So, <laughs> all right, let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for uh, revealing your goodness to us and your love. And um, I thank you that we mentioned many scriptures today uh, without quoting their reference, but I just thank you that you are the word. You have been made flesh and you have dwelt among us. And Father, that we are now in you. You are in us. And we just thank you that there's nothing left for us to do but to enjoy you to live out our, our destiny on the earth, to enjoy the Lord, to enjoy the things that he's given to us. And Father, I just thank you for moving by the Spirit. I thank you that we partake of this moving by the Spirit in people's lives. I thank you that there are opportunities we're going to see this week to speak into people's lives to share the love of God in dynamic ways, in amazing ways, in ways that are going to be shocking, that people would be shocked by your love this week, just shocking things that would be, instead of being shocked by sin, now we're going to be shocked by love. So I thank you that the shocking love of God is, is putting us in awe at your wonder, awe at your goodness, awe at your grace that you've brought to us, Lord. We didn't earn it. We couldn't earn it. We won't earn it. We've been made sons. So, Father, thank you that we're coming into mature places in you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Thanks, guys. That was different.